Now that we got that out of the way, let's get down to it. This is Real Talk with Herschel. We're here to uplift our community. We're not trying. We're here to give voice to our community where, uh, where we have not had one. We're here to uplift our children, uplift our women, and to uplift our men and encourage one another. All right. Uh, I see you. I see you all. Hey, Miss Paul. Anthony Thornton, I see you, big boy. And uh, everybody else that's on, so many names. I appreciate you all tuning in. If I miss anybody, it is not done on purpose. Again, we come here in love. I come here in the name of Black Love because we love our community and we have to learn to get our community together and work with one another. We have to put aside our small differences and work for the betterment of our community. Now, uh, black, black uh, radical politics has never been separated from black economics. Um, we're, we're in this fight. We're fighting for civil rights. We're also fighting for uh, the right to eat, the right to housing. We're fighting anti-discrimination, job stability, and we fight for equal pay. I say it every week. We're on an island, and we have to understand it. The alarm is a sound. It sounds crazy, but we are on an island, and no one is coming for us. So all these things that are missing in our community, we have to fight for them. We have to fight together. If you are not here to help with the fight, I just ask you to tune out. Tune out. That's that's all. It's not for you. God bless you and go in peace. But you will reap the, fit, the benefits because we will be successful in all that we do in fighting for our uh, for fighting for our rights. You know, we fight for weather uh, equality. We're also fighting for the um, fighting against the dynamic and the uh, mechanism of the state uh, as, as, as a vehicle to exclude us from financial gains, loans, and things of that nature. So we have to, um, we have to understand what, what dire straits we're in. We have to take this very seriously. We have to. And we have to have a discussion. Uh, we have to talk about the lack of ownership in our black communities. You know, it's, it's, um, it's inseparable from the fact that black people were property who were placed in, mar in the margins of society. You know, we have to remember that our constitution says that we are citizens. We have to make our country live up to what they said. Martin Luther King said in one of his speeches that, that you know, with the, uh, the, with the, uh, the, the writing of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment, that our country has failed us. And they have. And we can no longer just sit by and do nothing. Um, I can't sit here and do nothing and, um, and, and just let it go. I can't. Uh, I've been given the opportunity to have this vehicle. This is our vehicle. I don't care that my name is on the show. This is our vehicle. So everybody out there under my voice, whether you be on the radio or online. This blueprint has to go out to the black community. We're trying to fix Alabama, because this is where we're broadcasting from. Those in Alabama, the wiregrass. But this can be used in any community, anywhere in the world, and we have to remember that. Now, um, we have to have a serious discussion and talk about the needs and uh, the mythologies that surround all of these things that we can and can't do. And look, Marshall, look, uh, you know, uh, uh, over the past couple of weeks, uh, I've noticed a trend with our conversations. Uh, is my phone? Yes, it is. I've noticed a trend with our conversations. Uh, we, we have tw Two weeks in a row, Herschel, we have talked about economics, and we have had side discussions about both uh, uh, how black people can engage with an economy that oppresses us and how capitalism can actually work in that community. I just think that it would be a good idea if we had that discussion more directly, Herschel. But last week, we had a really good discussion about uh, housing and about uh, how housing has worked both historically and for black people. You know, uh, usually we're told that uh, the, the key to success for the black community is that we need to pool our money, we need to collectivize, we need to uh, own more black businesses. And, you know, if we own more black businesses and if we behave like, like, like we see Koreans behaving or behave like, you know, our, 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 our statements about Jewish people behave, you know, if we've just behaved more intelligently like other races behave, then we would get the same outcomes. But uh, uh, one thing that we ignore, we ignore two things about that. We ignore, uh, the first thing that we ignore is history. We ignore how history has made it so that 
uh, uh, the white people that we see as quote unquote being more successful were given 250,000 free uh, square miles of acres in the West and the Midwest, Midwest as a consequence of the Homestead Act. Uh, we, we ignore how uh, how things like the GI Bill, how things like uh, housing loans uh, that, that that were consequences of the New Deal, you know, those went exclusively into white hands that were able to build a largely white middle class. These are things that we were excluded from. And when we're talking about the uh, differences between income and wealth, what we're talking about is we're talking about how the government aided in white people actually being able to build up and concentrate that wealth while putting us in more economically vulnerable conditions. And if we don't have that same level of, uh, of state attention, if we don't have that same level of state investment, it's also impossible for us to have the same economic results. And I think that uh, a lot of the discussions that we have in the black community, I think that they, uh, they, they turn in a way where it makes our economic condition our fault. It says that the reason why we don't have this is because we're not acting smart like the other races. Well, the problem is that, you know, first off, by being property, by being former property, by being in a region where, you know, uh, after being property, we were put into convict leasing, we were put into sharecropping arrangements, we were put into areas where if we tried to do land or tried to own land, uh, we were kicked out of that land in places like Tulsa, in places like Rosewood and whatnot. These are these you know these are consistent dynamics in the black community, and they have a long term effect because you know when we talk about the Great Migration, uh, which is what uh, uh, the NAACP I think wanted us to focus on during Black History Month in February. Uh, when we talk about the Great Migration, we're talking about people having to leave the land that they built in the South and then go up, up north where they had uh, where they had uh, uh, various forms of tenant exploitation. So uh, you know. Uh, there has just never been a period where, uh, first off, there's never been a period where the black economy could interact without uh, uh, exploiters from outside the community, be they white people, be it the state, or anything like that. And there's also never been a point where we were able to allow and able to accrue capital in anywhere near the same way. And I think that that's something that we, we keep in mind. You know, we talked about uh, uh, us being lazy, unemployed, but our unemployment rate is, is because of uh, hiring discrimination. Our unemployment rate is still double the rest of the nation. Our uh, uh, attainment from income, we, we, you know, black 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 people make less. Uh, uh, black people make less by income than white people for the same jobs. Uh, black women make less for the same jobs. Prisoners are paid pennies on the dollar for, and you know, they're, and when, when they're predominantly black people, we're talking about wealth. We're talking about wealth that's being taken out of our community. So you know, these dynamics come to you know come to the fore, and I, I feel like our discussion around them puts too much, uh, it, it presupposes an agency that uh, is not, uh, it's not informed and not honest about black people's uh, political power or economic predicament. And I think that that's, you know, I think it's good to talk about it correctly. And there, there is a word for it. And I think that we need to use that word more often. It's capitalism. Uh, capitalism is what incentivized planters to maintain slaves uh, in Mississippi, Mississippi had the highest concentration of, you know, Mississippi is currently the poorest state. It had the highest concentration of millionaires during the antebellum era uh, uh, when there were slaves in the state because slaves were property. Slaves uh, uh, were wealth that could be transferred from white person to white person. When you owned a slave, you not only owned that, you not only owned the slave themselves, you owned the labor, you owned the value of that slave, and you owned what that slave could produce, particularly if that slave was female. So you know, the, you know, these are things that cascade. These are things that are built back into the economy, and these are things that uh, the government at the time they were willing to actually pay slave owners uh, uh, to 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 get that slave. They call it compensated emancipation. They were, right, will, they right. were they, yeah, they were willing to pay slave owners for their slaves. So you know, uh, uh, when we're talking about black wealth, you know, there is no interaction of black wealth that isn't interaction with. Uh, uh, both white dominance, white society, white oppression, and that includes capitalist uh, oppression. And uh, you know, if I were to define capitalism, uh, I would say that this economic system where uh, the benefits of your labor, of your work, are concentrated in the hands of the few. They're con concentrated in the hands of your bosses. They're concentrated in the hands of CEOs and corporations. You know, if you work at McDonald's, if you work at Walmart, if you work at Target, I want you to think about how much you make and then to look up how much your CEO makes. Well. Uh, I, I want to answer two things. Okay, follow me. One to you and, and one to Mr. Thorpe. He asked, uh, where does our faith come in uh, or play uh, playing our struggles? How long how, how long to wait on God and move in our situation? We've been marching for 60 years. First of all, Mr. Thornton, good morning. Second of all, there's more than one way to skin a cat. And if you sit and waiting on God, you, you won't be waiting a long time. Because uh, somewhere I read, faith without works is dead. Mm. Second of all, I'm going here to Mr. Antoine 
and everything that he said is absolutely true. And I will say the same thing to him. Just because the situation is this, we are not a monolithic uh, group. So uh, there are some people that those stereotypes may fit, even though even though they may be taught stereotypes. Uh, just because the deck is stacked against us doesn't mean that we shouldn't try and we shouldn't try some of those things. Now, everybody can't march to the same drum. Now, uh, Mr. Thornton mentioned about marching for 60 years. I ain't no marcher. I ain't going to sit by and let nobody sit no dogs on me. I said this last week. I ain't going to let nobody spray me with a water, water hose or beat me down and just take it. I'm not built like that. God bless those that do. And God and thank God for those that did it before me. You know, because the games that they did make were, were, were very good. But again, we all try to get the same place, but we can't all take the same road. So again, just because we're in dire straits, just because it looks bleak, doesn't mean that you should, some people still shouldn't try to open businesses, to get loans, to fix their credit, because there are things that we can do. Now, but, 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 but my issue is this. Uh, when we're talking about the interaction of racism and economics, we're talking about a systemic problem. Right. So one of, one of the things that we have to acknowledge is that even if there are individual cases we can rise out of that, it, the, those individual cases don't constitute a systemic solution. Well, you know what? you you, you got to crawl before you walk. You know, you, that, 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 this, that, that, what was, what, this system was built. The, 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 the system we've been living on this system for 300, 400 years, over 400 years. Now, with, with, with us going from one slave master to another, we were, we're never really free. You know, the system has collective effects, so we can't. So, uh, so solutions cannot in, be individualistic. If we have a, if, if the system has conspired to uh, uh, redline us into poor neighborhoods, to inherently make it so that if a black person moves into a white neighborhood, that neighborhood's property values lower. Uh, if they make it so that a, black, a concentrated black neighborhood is more likely to get police brutality, more likely to get police enforcement, you know, these are collective dynamics that are not addressed by one person in that black neighborhood moving out and becoming a black millionaire. Now, uh, yes, they could probably give something back, but the systemic reality is still a systemic reality. It involves the collective. So individual efforts to uh, get out of a collective predicament don't affect that collective predicament. You know, and, and I hear you. We're, 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 we're talking but, systems. We're yeah, talking we're talking systems. systems. Now, now it's, it's, it's a little bit bleaker living here in Alabama because there are black-owned businesses. Wait, not only black-owned businesses, there are black-owned banks as well. Now, again, you're not going to find them here in Alabama. Now, I did see in Tuskegee the first black-owned bank in the United States. I don't know if it's still open, but I did see the building. Now, if you go to New York, New Jersey, That's uh, Birmingham probably, as well. probably Birmingham as well as Chicago, some other large... Uh, cities, you will find uh, black banking institutions. But, but and, and again, but you, you, this is a system that's been built for over 400 years, Antoine. You cannot, it's, you can't topple it overnight. You have to make very. Um, what I'm saying. Very deliberate. Well, what I'm saying is that the, uh, 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 when the consequences are systemic, the only actions and steps forward that matter are themselves systemic and collective. So one person moving out of the, out of a collective situation is not the group moving out of that collective situation. It's just that it's just for that one person. We, well, well, it's individualistic. It, it, it it's individualistic, way it can be. But if that person makes a means for others to follow suit, because again, you're negating the fact that there are black people. But, 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 but the thing, but the thing, see that, that that's black capitalism though. When you talk about black banks, you know, everybody doesn't own that black bank Herschel. That black bank has one owner, it likely only has one board of directors. And, and, and it's not, so, it's not so, black so if you can't get a loan from a white bank and a black bank will loan it to you, isn't that kind of going around the system and creating? Well, I don't, a, a first off, system? I would have to I, I, give me a specific bank. I don't know whether black banks. You know yeah, black banks in New BNB in New Jersey, uh, and I know there are several in New York. Again, I, I'm, not I'm, not, I'm not familiar with their loan practices, but I, what I can tell you is that a black bank opening your neighborhood. The benefits of a black bank, the income and capital that, that flow through a black bank, the, the, that's going to be predominantly for the institution, for the bank itself. That's not in the community. But you just hands. said black people are, don't don't have access to loans. Yes, they don't. Now, if the black bank is, is loaning people money to get housing, isn't that part of defeating the system that you're talking about? Uh, it depends on the uh, it depends on the scope. Like I said, I would like to see. You're talking about the scope. You, yes. You're talking about one but bank at a time. Again, again, there is no black. There are no black banks that I know of. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me. I don't think there are any black-owned banks in Alabama. 
what, I'm, what, what I'm saying is that uh, 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 if poverty is a collective problem, if, if plunder is a collective problem, if the problem is that uh, uh, issues of housing and income disparities are issues that are faced by the collective and by the majority of black people, then one bank opening cannot address that. It starts, Antoine, before you can run, you got to take one step. I hear you talking, but you're talking crazy. You got to take a step before you can run. So you want just the institutions to just magically appear and be fair. Not magically, but... but so, so what happens is I open a bank here. I show that it works. Somebody else opens up another bank and another bank. I mean, it, it, it's just like, same thing with the civil rights movement. It didn't magically wipe out Jim Crow. It did. It started place by place. Bus boycott here. Uh, lunch counter ascendance here. This, that, and the other. Because these folks, they turned in their sheets for uh, suits and badges. But that's another topic. But what I'm saying is this. You're negating the fact that you said part of the problem is bad lending practices. And I say to you, if black banks open up in black neighborhoods and lend to those people so they can own their own home, you're saying it doesn't count? It doesn't matter? No, I'm not saying it doesn't count. It doesn't matter. I'm saying that first of all, I would need more information before I determine but isn't, whether isn't or not that, it matters. Isn't that the step... You just said black people can't get loans. If I show you black banks, black black institutions that are loaning money to black families and black people to open their businesses, isn't that what you, you just said it doesn't happen? And I'm telling you it does happen. Now, if it does happen, then that answers part of your question. It can be replicated. No? No, because uh, the reason why it can't be replicated is, is it's kind of multifold. First off, uh, again, I would like to be very careful about what we say black banks do and can't do. I don't personally know have that information in front of me right now, so I can't tell you whether they give loans at a similar rate as other loans. I can't tell you whether they have compacts with, uh, yeah, yeah, I can't tell you whether they have compacts with, with broader white banks. I can't tell you how they interact with federal regulations. I can't tell you whether or not, you know, they were even involved themselves in any of the toxic lending practices. These are things that I don't know because I don't have the information in front of me. How, uh, the other thing is that in order to open a bank, you still require capital. You still go back to the same. Yeah, yeah, you, you still require capital, not only co uh, uh, personal capital for the person that owns the bank, but also collective capital from the community. Now, uh, if, you're, if, you're, you're, if you're a disproportionately poor community, uh, you are also going to have a harder time actually being able to pool or acquire that degree of wealth. And again, that, I mean, not wealth, that, that degree of capital. You, 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 you I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling no. Because what I'm saying is this. I'm, let's say, okay, we haven't looked up the, the stats. Let's say it meets that. That can't be replicated because there are black institutions loaning to black people without these predatory rates. I'm telling you what I know for a fact. You, you said part of the problem is black people can't get loans. I also said part of the problem is capitalism. Said, you said part of it, right. So, say, so, 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 so if I can solve part of the problem by opening a bank in a, in a predominantly black area where people can get loans to open their black businesses and to own their own home, that's not a... Again, there's not going to be a solution that solves everything all at one time. You've got to take steps. Everything is a process. You want to skip the process and go to utopia. It ain't going to happen. So, you, again, you are negating the fact that people are making strides to do this, just like with Black Wall Street. If they were taking strides. It could have been replicated, but at that time, we were in a different time and place, it was destroyed. All the places that, that have made strides in the past, black towns that have taken care of themselves, were destroyed. Rosewood, we can go on and on and on. Now, we live in a different time. It can't be done so overtly uh, as to just go in and destroy the town. It can be done uh, in a more covert way. Uh, I, I would actually point us to Detroit and Flint as examples of how it can be done both overtly and covertly. Uh, when, when, when white people were tired of Detroit, they took, uh, they took all the capital out of it and they moved with their dollars and they moved with their bodies. They moved into the suburbs around the county, and they denied Detroit water. They denied Detroit power. They denied them uh, pretty much all the, fit, the, the the trimmings of a modern city. So the city was not able to upkeep itself. It, it, had, a, it had a base capital pole, a pool, and it was not able to upkeep itself because it left that pool to be held up only by the poor black citizens. And now Detroit is dilapidated. Now Detroit is destroyed uh, uh, by willful I've policy seen, seen from, from, from state government. And so, you know, 
they don't really need to do that with firebombs anymore. If capital is disproportionately concentrated in white hands, and we should note that white people have 16 times the wealth that black people do. Uh, we should note that this is a, that this is an endemic fact, and we should also note that when we're talking about housing, you know, white people didn't just have loans; they also had specific assistance from the state. They were, you know, when I talk about the Homestead Act, I'm talking about 250,000 acres that were given for free to white people, and the only requirement was that they reside on that land for five years, Herschel, before it got turned over to them. Okay. These, these, these are state mechanisms. You know, these are state mechanisms that we're trying to. Uh, uh, we're trying to contradict with private mechanisms, and that's kind of what I was. That's kind of why I'm leery about the black bank angle because if the problem is capitalism, if the problem is capitalism, wait a second, wait a second, let me finish. Wait a second, wait a second. If the problem is capitalism, the problem is uh, 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 concentration of wealth in the hands of the few. The problem is that we don't have a state that's actually responsive to our needs as we need them. You know, the problem isn't that we we, we don't we just need laws. Well, the problem is that we need houses. The problem is that we require residents. Okay. We require the okay. right to residence. Now, and, and, and I hear you. Jesus, take the wheel, please. But what I'm telling, what I'm saying to you, you're negating everything. You have to call me for you want utopia. It don't work like that, Antoine. It works like that for white people. people. Say what? It works like that for white people. No, it doesn't. Sure? This system that's in place didn't start off like that. There were many slave rebellions. There, there were there were many uprisings. So again, a system was put in place, and you know that. A system was put in place. But the that system was white supremacists. So, of course, and, and been wait, wait, people wait, but, but again, it didn't happen overnight, Antoine. Just the same way. I'm not I asking you to accelerate the timetable. Yes, I'm yes, asking you are because what I'm, I'm asking telling you. For is, I'm telling you, if there are institutions that answer the question, you said that there's no way for black people to get along. And I'm telling you, there are black banks, if there are black banks that are lending people, they can't lend to the whole country. You have to start somewhere. You mentioned Detroit. That's one city. And I, and if I mention to you another city that has done something to um, negate that, you're going to say, well, it doesn't matter because it's only one city. But you'll make an example of one city. And it starts like that, Antoine. You have to start somewhere. Once a model works, then it goes out. It's like an epidemic, just like a disease. It has to start somewhere. You want to skip the process, and you want to negate the fact that people are doing what they're doing. What the hell are we sitting here for? Talking about there's a problem. What the hell are we going out here mentoring kids for if you say it don't matter? It's, it's individualistic. So I'm going to stop going to schools. I'm going to stop helping kids get their license. I'm going to stop helping uh, single mothers get help. I'm going to stop all that. That's what I should do. Uh, I, what you should do is uh, when, we, when you're analyzing a systemic problem, you should only uh, acknowledge challenges to that system as solutions. And, and that's precisely what I'm doing here. What I'm saying is that the problem is twofold. The problem is that we're in a white supremacist system that, because it's white supremacist, calls for the concentration of capital in the hands of one ethnic group that's placed above all the other ethnic groups. This is reflected not just by whether or not they can get loans, but also by how the state regards their property, by how the state regards the valuation of their property, by how the state gives them income and gives them benefits, by how the state uh, you know, grants them pensions, by how the state uh, subsidizes things that are coded white like farming. Uh, uh, you know, these, these are things that are interactions. Uh, uh, you know, there's not just white people uh, you know, starting a model, then bring it forward. This is actually state policy dictating the conditions with which white people individualistically can work. The, the, the state is collectivizing those conditions. The right. state is collectivizing well, that I, economic I, I situation. And, and so, the problem, the problem is that you know, when we're when we're more started with black banks, we're working backwards. We're asking for when we're going, wait, a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Well, oh my God. when we're talking about black banks, we're we're starting backwards because we're asking for uh, uh, the benefits of collective state investment without actually having that state investment. You can't have one without the other. You, the, 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 the utility of, uh, of a black bank and, uh, and, uh, and in one city or one locality without it being able to scale up in any particular way is that without that state interaction, without any kind of regulatory system in place, uh, that can't scale up, that won't scale up, it won't last. And one of the things, uh, one of the articles that I actually showed you in the research, Herschel, was talking about how black funeral homes have faltered because of stuff like that, Herschel, how black businesses have faltered because the kinds of loans, because the kind of capital that is necessary for those kind of things to step up, they, 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 were, they were systematically removed from the black economy. When the Great Recession happened, uh, uh, we, had a, we had a number of people, you know, people were talking about houses in the same way that they talk about business now. Business now. They were saying that if you want wealth, buy a house. Uh, people like Cornell West and Tavis Smiley, they were doing little conferences in the early 2000s, uh, telling black people to buy houses in the name of Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac, who ended up helping start the recession. And those toxic loans ended up wiping out black wealth for a generation. Every single other ethnic group, Herschel, has recovered from the black recession except for black people. 
That's not because we have poor practices. That's not because we don't try. That's not because we don't have black businesses, black banks. That's because we're poor. We have less capital overall. And because we have less capital overall, we are more vulnerable overall. Yes, we're vulnerable. Let me ask you this, Antoine. Shoot. Let me ask you this. Shoot. Now, you, if, let, let's use you and me, for instance. Mm, okay. You need a job. You need a house. Uh, you, need, you want to start a business. Hypothetically, yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically, people. Hypothetically. Now, I said, Antoine, well, I, 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 can, I can get you a job. We can start you off with that. You don't want the job because you still need a house and you still need transportation. Of it. I'm at, okay, yeah, I, 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 I can answer that. Oh, I can answer that. Do, do, well, do you take the job? Okay. Uh, do, no, wait, wait, let me wait, answer, no, no, answer no, the no, full no, thing. No, let me take, answer the full thing. The, 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 the question, no, the I question is, the question, the question I'll is, the question, do you take the job? And I'll tell you why the answer doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. First off, uh, yes, I'll take the job, but I also want to assume that me taking the job will actually do anything to affect racism. That just affects my personal predicament. Racism is a collective endeavor. Racism is a collective oppression. If the solution is Antoine. also not collective, it's not actually Antoine. against racism. So if we collectively, if these banks are started by black black boards and black people's money, and they go and they service the black community, it's a start. It's not an ending point. And it's not going to fix any, it's not going to be an overall fix, but it's a start. Again, you, you're negating the fact that people are doing things to try and turn the system. You're saying it doesn't matter. You listen, here in Alabama, it's a different animal. You're absolutely, it's a different animal out here altogether. But I can take you to other cities and show you that there, that there are pockets and black business is thriving. Black entrepreneurship is up. It is up. In Alabama, it may not be. And this is what we're doing here. So again, you and I, ourselves, can't change anything. And it's not stopping us from trying. So I understand the bleak outlook, but I also want to acknowledge the fact that there are lots of people that are doing things to try to, to change the system. I want us to be clear and critical about how capitalism is influencing our metrics for success. Uh, uh, entrepreneurship is a capitalist metric. It's some that uh, is discussing the benefits of capital flowing to one person and then presuming it flowing to that one person actually qualifies as a collective gain. When we were, if you, know, wait, 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 wait. You have corporations that come in and service our community and put nothing back. Right. So if, if people open up, so you're telling me, me opening up a, 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 a grocery store in a black area, does nothing for the community? I'm not saying it does nothing for the community. Wait a minute. I'm saying that's capitalism. I'm saying that's capitalism influences Is it not? No. How isn't it? Antoine, because I want to be successful and I can help my people, that makes me a bad person? No, not bad Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's capitalism. If I, that's not if I meet a need of a community, so it's okay to go out here you're on 231. I'm meeting a need because need, my community. You're, you're meeting have, a need using the free market. You're going to pay some money. So it's okay to pay white people, but not me? No, that's also not what I'm saying. You see, this is, this is what I mean. I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm trying to understand if I can service my community and give you the same services at the same rate or lower, why wouldn't we, again, the dollars stay inside. The same thing, the Jewish community, the, 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 the uh, Hispanic community, they open up their own businesses inside the community. The, the money stays in the community and it helps build the community. So you're saying if we did it, it don't mean nothing. I'm trying to understand. No, I'm saying that it is capitalistic. I, by by, by the definition it, of does, capitalism. But doesn't it service that community well? Uh, again, I, I think that that's exceedingly complicated, Herschel. Those tax that's monies. The, okay, well, 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 let's break it down a little bit. Break, uh, break down. Let's break it down a little bit. Okay, well, when a black business opens up, uh, uh, you, uh, you Herschel, if Herschel's, uh, Herschel, Herschel's grocery store or Herschel's restaurant opens up in the black community, is the black community making uh, the majority of the profit from that, from that grocery store or, or restaurant, Herschel? Monetarily, maybe not. Okay, okay. But that's why I stopped. Wait, wait, wait. wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm, that's, that's why it's complicated. Somebody okay. tell me I'm crazy. Antoine, if I provide a service, I should get paid for my time. If you pay, you will go to TGI Friday, you pay them white folks. So you tell me you won't come to me because I'm black? You know, Fred Hampton, Fred Hampton. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't tell me, Fred. I'm asking Antoine Hill. I'm asking you because this is part of the problem. You're saying, that because I'm offered a service, I shouldn't be paid. I'm, no, as, I'm not saying again, that. No. How am I not? How am I not helping my community by providing a service and putting my money back into my community? 
So I keep up my housing. I provide jobs in my community, right? How am I not providing? I'm giving the community better food than they're getting at Dollar General because everything is processed. So I'm bringing in fresh food, fruits and vegetables, so those that don't have transportation can get to me. How am I not helping my community? Okay, again, I, I, I think we need to distinguish between uh, uh, two, 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 two concepts. I'm using the term capitalism, and you're using the term helping the community. Uh, the, 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 there are reasons, okay, let, let's untangle this a little bit. I, first off, let's, let, let's, let's define capitalism. Uh, uh, capitalism is a, is a system, is an economic system, wherein both profits and funds are concentrated in the hands of the managers, the bosses, and the, and the corporations, and the CEOs, or you know, any entity, you know, if you open that business and people are paying money at Herschel's, Herschel's is generally gonna be the one making that money. Even though, it's a, so even though it's a benefit to the community, even though it's good to not have a food desert in the community, Herschel's, if, for Herschel's grocery store, Herschel is still going to be accruing the funds. And the reason why that matters is because there are still class differences inside the black community. We saw this during the civil rights movement. Uh, Dr. White actually made an excellent point on this front. He was talking about how the Montgomery bus, bus boycott was facilitated by people who had mm -hmm. cars, mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. cars, right. And, right. and against people who had buses. That's a basic class distinction. And the things that can make, make some black people richer than others requires some black people participating in an economic arrangement where they're the managers instead of the workers. So, okay. What, what, wait, yes, yeah, wait. go on, go on. Fix it. Tell okay. me how you fix it. Okay. The, Tell me the solution. Okay, there, there, are, there are a number of solutions to be made. Uh, uh, first off, I would suggest that, uh, I, I think we can use the Black Panthers uh, Breakfast Program as an interesting tool. Uh, somebody, I think it was Cornell West who wrote a book uh, he was able to document all the, pro the, 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 the programs that the Black Panther Party was able to implement. And uh, one thing we don't talk about is we don't talk about how they paid for those programs. Uh, the breakfast program was not paid for by uh, asking people for donations or asking people to pay for the breakfast themselves. It was a free breakfast. The reason why it was able to be a free breakfast is because they were using institutions like churches, Herschel, they were using institutions like churches, which did not require capital, which people freely gave to because they thought they saw a need to give to. And those churches distributed those funds to make sure that those breakfast programs were kept up. Now, uh, when we're thinking about alternatives to uh, to an ownership class or to something that actually uh, increases class divides inside the black community, we need to think in terms of co-ops. We need to think in terms of collectivization of black institutions like churches. We need to think in terms of models of funding where, you know, where in order to, uh, to, to, to maintain a program, uh, we actually uh, pool a percentage of our income like you would with taxes or like you would with anything else and make sure that that gets distributed to, 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 to government or not government, but to, to neighborhood programs like we see in Jackson, Mississippi. It's not impossible, but, 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 but it's a structural difference in how you're conceiving. Let me, how, how well, let me ask you this. Now, let me ask you. now, you said it's done in Jackson, Mississippi, right? Uh, I said I saw it. Yes, yeah. Okay. It's just tempted at least. Now, you just told me when I said that models can be scaled up, that they can't. Now, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm waiting. Now, you're going to tell me that what they did in Jackson, Mississippi, can be replicated. Dude, just somebody hit Raymond. No, no, no. Did no, no, he no, or no. did he not? Hey, no, I'm using me. it as an example of a non capitalistic model for, for economic engagement. I did not using it as a model that needs to be scaled up. I'm using it as saying that when you do that, it's not capitalistic. And it, it's the distinction between collectivization of labor. It's the distinction between collectivization of labor and, and collectivization right. of funds into so, the so, hands of private owners. So when that happens, how are you going to pay your bills? How, again, there has to be some sort of monetary exchange. If I provide a service, I hear you. I hear you. That's because we're in a capitalist system, though. Do you require that money to actually have housing and food? Okay, so let's be clear about the problem. Let's, let's, deal, no, the problem. No, no. Yeah. let's deal with what's real and not what should be. You're, deal, you're dealing in, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world. I hear you. <laughs> Antoine, again, what you're saying is not going to feed me today. It's not because you don't have something that can change the system today. Nothing, again, nothing is going to change the system in the next couple of years to implement that. So we have to deal with reality. We have to have our own institutions. We have to have control over those institutions. Why is it okay that, that white people make money off of us? Everybody else makes money off of us, and we don't. Again, if, my thing is, if you're reinvesting your money in my community, then I can I can patronize you. If you're, if you're building schools, uh, uh, in my community, if you're fixing the roads in my community, whether it be the state or whether it be the business owner, but we take our we take our money to all these other places that take 
all the resources out of our community and take our money out and put nothing back. Then you have black owned businesses because they're making money and they build the school. They're wrong because they're making money. They put money back in. They're wrong. They build a playground. They're making money and they reinvest in the, in the community that they're taking from. I'm dealing with reality. I'm not dealing with a system. You, the system that you, you that you talk about has worked in the past before we became a capitalist world. Because I don't know anywhere where that would work because you have to deal with the world. And to deal with other countries, you have to have currency or what's perceived as currency. Because everybody doesn't deal on border system. Now, even if you even if we had our own place and we were like that, at some point in time, people are not gonna take uh, fruits and vegetables and livestock as payment for the things that they, they want to exchange with. We're gonna have to have gold or silver or some type of money that's recognized by the, uh, the IMF, the International Monetary, Monetary, Monetary Fund. Monetary Fund. So again, I'm dealing with, with what is, or not the way it should be. And this is this is the only thing that I'm saying. The things that you're saying, okay, in an ideal world, yes. But you can't, show me how you can implement that. That's all I'm saying. It's not gonna happen because it's been almost 500 years of the bull crap that we've been living up. We can you know, barely walk down the street without you know, getting shot in the body. You know, you know, Herschel, I, I think that part of the responsibility of black political engagement is both uh, engaging with reality, as you say, but also uh, envisioning the should as it, as it applies to our own predicament. And right now, uh, when, when, when the should was slavery, uh, uh, we spent 300 years not just being slaves, but also dreaming of freedom and working towards freedom. Not just uh, dreaming, say it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just dreaming. Yeah, and working towards. That's all. And working towards. Wait a second. Saying. Wait a second. But you know, if we're if our solution for engaging in a white what Bell Hooks calls a white supremacist capitalist patriarchal society, if our if our model for engagement with that is nothing more than changing the faces of who is the owner in that capitalist system. Uh, uh, then we're not actually doing anything that's challenging that system itself. Like, you know, uh, again, I think that the, and actually go back to my slavery analogy, uh, you, you'll like this a lot, actually. You will like you this. Sure? To, 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 to go back to my slavery analogy, uh, uh, this is like, uh, this the, you know, going from uh, white capitalist to black capitalist is like wanting to go from a slave to an overseer. You're assuming that black people are going to treat white and black people the same way as white people. Uh, I'm now, assuming. Wait, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. wait, 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 uh, are we starting with that without a state? Antoine, I, I've been at so of you, I won't say anything. We've been places <laughs> without a state. No, no, no. We've been places without without prices, right? Mm. Without prices. Uh, yeah. And we get charged one price, another uh, yeah. right, right or wrong. Yeah, uh, that's, okay. that's certainly true. Right. That's so, certainly again, true. these are the things that, this is the favoritism that's shown by, by other cultures, right? To their own. We could do the same thing. In a micro scale, in a micro scale. I think that, again, Herschel, I, I, the, the state thing is incredibly important. I'm sorry, Herschel. The state thing is incredibly important. It matters who is writing your tax code. It matters who's distributing tax funds. It matters whether those tax funds are going to your community. It matters whether somebody is writing programs to your benefit. You've talked before about the opioid crisis. The opioid crisis is precisely, is precisely what happens when the state actually cares about your material well-being. So having a state that has that level of concern is a major component. I would actually say it's 80% of what's required here and 80% of the problem with us. We have a state that's actually hostile and antagonistic to our material benefit. And because of that, our oppression is starker. And because of that, individualistic solutions can't scale up in the way that we want it to. But I think I want to go back to something that you were kind of implying and kind of hinting at going before when I when I noted the conflation between a white capitalist and a black capitalist. Here, here's the issue with capitalism. And here's the, the issue with capitalism is the issue of inequality. When you have when you have wealth concentrated in fewer hands, that's power being concentrated in fewer hands. And what happens when power is concentrated in fewer hands? They want to get more of it. They want to make sure that they're able to concentrate it. And, and the problem that I see and the concern that I see is that if there's a class insulation within the black community, there's going to be an insulation of the kind of problems that we have, just like we saw with the Montgomery bus boycott. What a boycott meant of the public transit system is very different uh, uh, if you have a car versus if you don't, Herschel. And the, the, that, that's going to apply to any other problem as well. If the problem is low pay, if the problem is 
uh, 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 you know, where, you know, which it, it, it problems with white people opening up uh, pollution centers or anything like that, uh, uh, plants or something like that, and poor black communities, but not middle class black communities. That's a problem that's going to, that's a problem that's going to affect those poor black people over the middle class black people. And what class divides do is that they create a pretext for insulation. That's something that we have to be able to fight against internally because what we want here, what we consistently call for is black unity, but class or the perception of class differences can be a, a, a barrier to that unity. We, we see this all the time in churches and in the pulpit where, uh, where when, we're talk, when, we're, when you hear preachers, when you hear uh, uh, you know, good Christian leaders and good Christian folk talk bad about black people, this is actually middle class black people talking bad about lower class black people. And, and, and you know, this is something that can be further encouraged if we're not critical about what we want and what our solution will be. I think that this can be nipped in the bud. And that's one of the reasons why I think that our steps forward should be both collective and anti-capitalist, because I, I want to make sure that, you know, after we're fighting the white supremacist state, that we don't actually have to end up fighting uh, uh, the tab of smileys over here. And I, I'm just being, I'm just being real, I'm just being real. So, you know, again, this is why, this is why I, I, I'm calling for systemic and holistic approaches to how we, uh, think about the solutions to our problems because you know when we talk about black entrepreneurship, when we talk about black businesses, when we talk about black buying power, we are actually buying into a narrative of the same capitalism that actually incentivizes slavery. And we have to be very clear about that. We have to be very clear about why that's bad, and we have to be very clear about how the limited benefits of black entrepreneurship. You know, that, that, that's just the entrepreneur winning. That is not you winning. That is not the community winning. When the black when Barack Obama and Michelle Obama went up in the White House, we were all happy, but it was only them in the White House. It was. I'm sorry. That, 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 that's just the truth. That's just the truth. And what happened? Black Lives Matter. What, what, what we were seeing in poor black neighborhoods with black people getting shot. That's what was happening to everybody else. This is the, that, the that's the kind of divide that class inside the black community and an uncritical outlook on class inside the black community can actually encourage if we don't if we don't speak about it in, in a realistic term version. You know what? We go. It's getting hot in here. You know. <laughs> I thank everybody for tuning in. We're gonna play some. We're gonna we gonna we gonna play some music. We're gonna let Antoine have the last uh, word on that right now. We are gonna come back. and We gonna get it. Stay tuned to keep your comments coming. This is how discussion goes. This is how solutions are made. We don't have to agree. We don't have to be disrespectful. Antoine is crazy. We just have to accept that. <laughs> no, we have to, you know, but, uh, just being halfway from teaching, we have to learn to work together and try new things. We really do. Uh, there is no, there is no magic wand, people. But we do have to start thinking as a collective. We have to. We have to. We have to think as a collective. We have to. We have to. We have to stop thinking about self and think about what's best for our community. So like and share, like and share. I can't say hi to everybody.